This video is sponsored by KH Camera. If you're brand new to wedding photography, stepping into your first venue can actually be very overwhelming. So let's talk about some of the things I first look at when I get into a brand new venue. Now, currently I'm renting out a venue to record some content for my flash course, which if you haven't signed up, definitely check that out in the description below. But we have a full open venue. No chairs or tables are set up, but this is a good way to just look at the space and talk about what it is that I first look for when I jump into a venue. So let's go ahead and take a quick tour to get you over the fear of your first wedding venue. The first thing you wanna look for is your lighting. Seeing how your light is gonna be reacting in the space is absolutely huge, especially when you're dealing with a reception. So here in this venue, we have a nice big reception area. And the first thing that stands out to me are gonna be these market lights. The market lights give you a lot of nice ambient light in the room. And generally, even though this room is not set up, there usually is some side lighting as well, kind of up on the walls. So I know I have market lights. I know I have side lighting probably up on the wall. Also, there's a whole bunch of windows. Right now, it's about 5 p.m., so we are getting into the evening. You can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. But even with the windows and it being nighttime, I know I'm gonna get some kind of illumination maybe from the moon or just outside or just lighting in the area. So I know I have a fair amount of light. Now, the second thing I'm noticing is gonna be these ceilings. So the ceilings are full white. And when it comes to flash, this is gonna make it extremely easy on my part. Now, because this venue is so large, I probably would use off-camera flash. However, I know that with these white ceilings, I can bounce my flash and it should be fine. One of the main reasons I think I wouldn't wholly depend on that if I didn't have to, is that there's these beams going across as well as the, all the AC and heating, which is gonna block and maybe cause shadows depending on how I'm shooting. But either way, I know I got nice windows, I got market lights, and I have a white ceiling. So. As far as lighting, we're good to go. So the second thing I would look for is where the key players are gonna be. Now you're gonna have to imagine with me because we have no tables and chairs set up, but the dance floor and where the couple's table is gonna be and then where the parents of the bride and groom are gonna be. These are all things you wanna definitely take a look for. So looking at this venue, I would assume as far as where they'll put the DJ is maybe over here in this corner or over here in this corner, they're gonna choose one side. Now we do have this nice sliding door in the back. They probably wouldn't put the DJ there because it would make it easier for people to come in and out or maybe do a sparkler exit or something like that. So either DJ in this corner, DJ on this wall, DJ on this wall over here. Now, once I know where the DJ is, that's gonna give me an idea where the dance floor is. So our dance floor can be maybe in this space, a wider dance floor, wider dance floor fa facing over this way in this corner, something like that. And by knowing where the dance floor is, now I know how I wanna set up my flashes. Again, if you haven't had a chance to check out my flash course, definitely check that out. But I talk about how I set up my flashes and where I set them up, depending on the room. Cause it's not just the dance floor alone, but I also base it off of where all the rest of the guests are sitting. Once I figured out where the DJ table is, generally your couple's gonna be somewhere across from that. In this venue, I would assume it's gonna be across from the DJ and or right here in front of this sliding door. It'd be cute to have it open, have them sit in there, have some air behind them. It would look really good, especially outside, there's some more market lights. So if you're shooting with an 85 or a 110, you're gonna get that nice bokeh right behind their head. It's gonna look really good. So now that I know where my couple is, I know where my dance floor is, I know where I need to set up my flashes. You also, with all the tables, have to know just where you're gonna be able to weave in and out of. But again, that's something that's harder to show right now with a totally empty venue. If you're new to weddings and you don't wanna spend too much money building your kit, you can definitely save yourself a little bit with new to you gear with this video sponsor, KH Camera. KH Camera is the best place online to get used gear in great condition to build your wedding kit. With a wide selection from digital and film cameras, you can get anything you want. So especially if you wanna set yourself apart and be a hybrid shooter, buying your film cameras on KH Camera is gonna be the best way. Their wide selection is meticulously looked at and serviced to make sure it's in the greatest condition. And the way that they grade all of their gear is really awesome. Like you know exactly what you're getting whenever you decide to buy from KH Camera. Also, if you have some old gear that you wanna get rid of, it's very easy to sell your gear to KH Camera and they give you a great deal. 
Hop online with one of their specialists, show them what gear you're looking to sell, they'll give you a quote, and send it to you over to your PayPal extremely quickly and easily. Make sure to check out the link in the description below to get a 5% bonus buying or selling any gear with KEH Camera. Definitely use them for all of your gear because every time I buy something from them, I'm surprised at how awesome it looks. Let's go ahead and get back into this venue tour. The third place I'm gonna be looking for are places for portraits, especially if I'm at a smaller venue like this, where I can do my sparkler exit, and also where my cocktail hour is gonna be. Now clearly this looks like our cocktail hour, and it's actually really nice that it's covered like this because again, I have a nice white ceiling that's gonna be easy to bounce my flash off of. In here, I wouldn't even set up off camera flash. Flash on your camera is great. Let your second photographer go in there and take photos. It's gonna be awesome. There's market lights, it's great. But with a smaller venue, you definitely need to keep an eye on where it is that you're gonna be taking your portraits because you don't have a lot of choices. So even here, like if I had, let's say 10 minutes to come out and take quick portraits with my couples, the kind of stuff that I'm already looking at is gonna be, these trees are nice. We can put them in front of it, clearly shoot with a longer focal length. So like an 85, kind of blow it out a little bit. This is usable. We can do my bokeh panel wall so I can put the couple here and I can shoot from across. That makes it look way bigger. We got the black behind that. It's gonna be great. I'll be here, I can shoot through the trees a little bit and I would do that as well. Get a 24 mil, put my couple back here, have them kissing, shoot through it like this and see, we're taking this small venue that doesn't have much going on and now we're just creating all these options. I just gave you three different poses on this one set of trees already. And this is how you need to think as a wedding photographer. You can't just be like, oh no, the space is small. I don't know what to do. You gotta be on it, especially if you're behind. Also, if you haven't checked out my 10 favorite poses, definitely check that out at the link up above. So we have our three poses there. We could come over here. Now, obviously it's probably gonna be cocktail hour. So there'll be people around. There's gonna be people cheering on your couple like, oh yeah. So we might not be able to use this area, but I do, I really like kind of how the greenhouse is looking and I would probably shoot that wide. Also, I got my market lights here creating some kind of X. I would get down very low, lay on my back, shoot it with a 24, have my couple and have the X maybe kind of, yeah, just have them in between the X or something like that. Just have it be framing them some kind of way. And we already are up to six, seven shots. You can use the fence, shoot across it. That's actually what's happening here with these trees. I could put my couple groom back on the fence, shoot through here with a 110-85, get some foreground blur, some background blur. And again, you can make it work. You can make the smallest of venues work really quickly, even if you had just 10 minutes. And honestly, if y'all would like to see me do something like that, let me know. I'll see if I can get a couple together and simulate like a 10 minutes, what can you make when the planner's rushing you? You ain't got no time, but find out where you can do your photos. Now, as far as a sparkler exit, like I was saying before, I would assume they would be coming out of this door. They would open it up. And the nice thing about doing a sparkler exit here is the fact that I have market lights. So I'm gonna have a little bit of extra lighting along with my sparkles. I would assume all the guests are gonna line up here and a couple would come out. And again, I'll leave a link for my sparkler exit video, but the way that I would do it, the couple's gonna, all my guests are gonna close the back here after the couple comes through. And that's gonna be the money shot. We don't wanna sit here and worry so much about, oh, they're gonna run through the line and it's not gonna be perfect. What you really want is for after they get through the line, close the back of the line and take the shot right here, 24 mil or an 85 to get the bokeh in the back. And that's really what you wanna focus on. So again, check your lighting, look at the whole venue, check where your portrait spots are gonna be and figure out where the couple's sitting, where the dance floor is, where the parents of the couple are, all of that stuff. Those are your main points in any venue that you definitely wanna sit down and figure out before you get here and get stressed out. Now, if you're new to weddings and you're feeling a little overwhelmed, definitely check out this playlist here, which has full wedding days where you can follow me along like an assistant or second photographer and learn my process at weddings.